The news at noon starts right now. Well, 4th of July fireworks being blamed for some post holiday trouble. Bear County fire investigators believe fireworks what will left a smolder situation. We're going to get to that in just a few moments, but we have late breaking news to tell you about a shooting on the city's south side. Courtney Friedman joins us live now with information she just got from Chief William McManus on the scene. Courtney. Yeah, Tiffany and Max, the shooting happened in this house to my left uh, in that gray house. It happened around 930 this morning and just about an hour ago, Chief William McManus was here. We still see investigators coming into the scene. It's an active investigation. He said that in that house live a man and a woman in their 20s or 30s and they lived together and were in a relationship. That's when McManus said this morning another man showed up at the door who that homeowner believed was having a relationship with the woman inside. The men got into an altercation and that homeowner allegedly opened fire, killing the man. McManus said both men were armed with guns. There was a teenage girl in the home, but she was not injured. The point that I want to emphasize is this is not some someone who, who a stranger who broke into a house. Uh, there's no uh, um, there's no danger to anyone else in the neighborhood right now. I want everybody to, to know that. And the man who lives in this house who allegedly pulled the trigger, McManus said, is in custody, but he did not say if he is facing any charges. But we do know he is in police custody and is being questioned right now. We're live on the south side. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Courtney. New at noon, one person taken to the hospital after a reported stabbing on the city's north side just hours ago. The incident happened at 9.45 a.m. on Wednesday in the 13,000 block of Blanco Road, not far from Wardspark Parkway. Now we're learning what more about what led up to this situation. So far, we don't know the person who was taken to the hospital, but we do know that they're in critical condition. Make sure to stay with us on air and online for the updating situation. And 4th of July fireworks are being blamed for some post holiday trouble. That's right. So Bear County fire investigators, they're saying that they believe the fireworks that were left smoldering in the trash can. They believe that is what could have started a fire that injured and damaged two homes. Yeah, as Katrina Weber reports, they say it also is a reminder of the need to be safe when disposing of them. The 5th of July brought a reality that overshadowed any Independence Day celebrations here near Loop 1604 in West Military. Bear County firefighters tried but failed to save two families' homes on Knobsby Way from the flames that engulfed them. They got the call around 1 this morning, initially for a fence on fire between the two. The deputies found out that uh, it was apparently fireworks debris that was still may have still been smoldering was put in the trash can. Public information officer Tom Pina says embers inside the trash can didn't stay there. But by the time anyone realized they'd become a full fledged fire burning toward one home at first. Once the fire got up into the attic, firefighters say there wasn't much they could do. It burned through this house and then jumped to the one next door. Both were left with major damage. Seven people in all had to scramble to escape only hours after someone's holiday celebration. The tragedy in these situations is that it's usually the last thing people do. They shoot off the firework, they throw away the debris, put the trash can aside. Pina says he sees fires like this at least once a year. A too late reminder for some of the need for safe disposal of fireworks. Take the time, dunk it into a bucket of water. The best thing is leave it until the next morning and then put it in the trash can. It's a simple precaution that can prevent major destruction. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And I look outside with live cam, 89 degrees, and I think everywhere you could have been in San Antonio, you heard those fireworks last night. Oh, they were everywhere. <laughs> yes, they were. Uh, and it, it was uh, fine weather for the shows last night. We're watching the radar, though, closely today because we do have some rain there, and we may see a few showers and a couple downpours make their way towards San Antonio a little bit later today. Not a guarantee, but I think our chances are... A little bit better than they have been. And as we look at the radar right now, the authority radar, we've got some showers and storms approaching Howitzville. That uh, that little cell there probably producing some good rain. We've got some lightning strikes associated with it as well as it uh, moves a little bit closer uh, to the Howitzville area. 
and uh, may move just to the west of Howitzville near Shiner here over the next 30 minutes or so. Nothing going on in San Antonio right now. We just have some cloud cover, but I think our rain chances are at about 30% as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. So keep an eye to the sky. It's possible we could see a, a little bit of that uh, action on radar move closer to us. 96 at 4 o'clock, 96 at 5 p.m. Heat indices will be up near 100 today. There's a lot of humidity there. And we'll keep the 30% chance of rain going through about 8 p.m. before we see those rain chances drop off and temperatures fall down into the low 80s after midnight. Much more on the rain chances coming up tomorrow here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. New at noon, we now know a five-year-old is dead after a crash on the city's northwest side. And a 46-year-old driver police say was involved in that crash. That 46-year-old now facing manslaughter charges. This was the scene yesterday evening near West Avenue and I-10. Police say a driver and a Hyundai rear-ended another driver in a Nissan. That caused the Nissan to get hit by a driver in a truck. Officers say the child was in the back seat of the Nissan, was not in a car seat, taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. And new details this noon. A shooting is now a murder investigation. Police say it involves two teens on the city's east side. One of those teens is now dead. SAPD says the shooting happened just before 10 last night on G Street near I-10. A teen says they were in a car when they were shot, but would not explain what led up to the shooting. A 17-year-old was shot in the back and died of his injuries. The other teen was shot in the arm and is expected to be okay. Right now, there are no suspects for the shooting. And San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after an early morning shooting. This one around 4 a.m. at Stone Oak in 1604. Right now, we don't have much information. We do know a man who was shot was taken to the hospital. Still unclear how it all unfolded, and so far, no arrests have been made. The San Antonio police say a driver is behind bars, accused of drinking before getting behind the wheel, and then rashing into a house just west of downtown. It happened just before 11.30 last night on Northwest 26th Street. Police say a man in his 30s lost control of his truck and rolled into the corner of a house, breaking the gas line. A CPS crew arrived quickly and shut off the gas. The driver ran away but was caught in an HEB parking lot around the corner. He's facing charges of DWI and leaving the scene of an accident. Today, rescue crews continuing their search for a missing boater on Calaveras Lake. It's a story we first told you yesterday on the News at Noon. Bear County deputies called about the missing man yesterday morning. Sheriff Javier Salazar says a group of three friends went out fishing. One of them fell off the boat without a life jacket. Just for perspective, the lake covers more than 3,000 acres, but Sheriff Salazar says they have a good idea where they need to continue to search. San Antonio Pets Alive is back open today, and they still need your help after an emergency forced the group to move every animal out of its west side facility. The shelter's air conditioner gave out, closing the building for at least three weeks. All the animals need somewhere to go. If you're interested in helping out, you can find out more information and a pet foster application on our website, ksat.com. All right, go Spurs, go. Hopefully the first summer league game is a great indication. We have a recap of what happened. What comes next? Now to the latest on multiple mass shootings across America. Overnight, five injured in a shooting in Massachusetts and nine shot in Washington, D.C. ABC's Rena Roy reports that this all comes as the suspect in the Philadelphia shooting now faces a judge after authorities say he shot and killed five people. Authorities now identifying the suspect in the Philadelphia mass shooting is 40-year-old Kim Brady Carricker, who's facing a slew of charges, including five counts of murder for allegedly opening fire Monday night, killing five people and injuring several others. This armed and armored individual wreaked havoc, firing with a rifle at their victims, seemingly at random, shooting seven, killing five, including children babies. This surveillance footage obtained by ABC station WPVI appears to show a person shooting at a nearby intersection. Multiple shots fired. All you is caution. 59-year-old Ralph Morales, 31-year-old Joseph Wama Jr., 29-year-old Demir Stanton, 15-year-old Dewan Brown, and 22-year-old Lashad Merritt all killed. You took my son. You, you took my baby. LaShawn's mother, Marie, says her son was headed to the store across the street from home when he was gunned down. It's like I feel 
him saying, why me, why me, why me? In Washington, D.C. overnight, nine injured in a drive-by shooting, including a child and teenager. Outside of Boston, five people shot, two people arrested, and two guns were recovered. This after three were killed in Fort Worth, Texas, and eight others injured at a holiday event known as Como Fest. Authorities say a fight between two rival groups led to that incident. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been more than 350 mass shootings this year alone, five of them on the 4th of July and six the day before. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Get ready because as we've started a new month here in July, we have plenty of road work that's going to take us into the early days of August, believe it or not. So let's go ahead and get you started what you can expect along State Highway 151 over on the west side of San Antonio. Construction work. Now, this does begin July 5th, Wednesday, July 5th, that is, and should wrap on Thursday, July 6th. This all starts around 9 in the morning and hopefully will wrap around 3 in the afternoon. But it's during that time we're going to see single lane closures on the frontage road in both directions. That's east and westbound lanes. So be on the lookout there from Ingram Road to Cable Ranch Road. I do want to take a jump over here to I-10 in Kendall County where we have rail repairs. If you travel through I-10, you know that there's plenty of work taking place. This also begins Wednesday, July 5th, but should take us to Friday, July 7th. Work starts again at 9 in the morning and will wrap around 3 in the afternoon, but this does impact the exit ramp to 542 because it will be closed. All right, one more jump here, guys. We have another one in US-281 on the north side of San Antonio. There's concrete and paving work taking place. This also begins on Wednesday, July 5th and should wrap on Friday, July 7th. 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, single northbound lane closure at Mulberry Avenue. But if you scan this QR code, there's plenty of work taking place in and around the Alamo City that takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures that are happening in our area, so plan your commute ahead of time. Thank you, Stephen. Let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Just about 90 degrees. We see some blue skies. So did you guys see the fireworks last night? Did you see the big moon? I heard him. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. All of it. All of it. It was uh, really, really nice last night. The weather turned out pretty good. Now, as we get into this afternoon, I think we're going to see a little bit more activity on radar. At least that's what we're hoping for. Uh, the aquifer certainly could use some rain. It's down two tenths of a foot to 633.1. In your pollen count, molds did jump up today. They're in the moderate category at 670. We'll get you a radar update coming up. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. So I know a lot of people had that four day weekend, right. but a lot of people back to work today. Yeah, I've been here. Been here, <laughs> been here, smiles on our faces. Justin, you've been here too. Yes, uh, yes, and what we've been waiting on is to get authority uh, radar active again, get more showers and storms showing up. I think we all could use a little bit of rain, uh, especially because it kind of feels like a Monday, doesn't it? Uh, as we look at the uh, authority radar right now, there's not a lot there. We've got a couple of showers and storms uh, out near Howitzville, but nothing uh, here around San Antonio yet. Now, I am starting to notice some activity just to the south of us, nothing that's very heavy. But there's some deeper moisture trying to work in, and I think as we head towards the afternoon, we'll start to see some of these small pop-up showers. Some of them may put down some lightning and thunder. You may hear that. They'll be quick, they'll be brief. Not going to produce a lot of rain, but maybe it cools us down a little bit and every little bit of rain we can get around here will take. So uh, this little shower here is in between Three Rivers and Kennedy and uh, working north. And we're noticing some new development here south of Poth moving up towards Fl Floresville. All of it pretty light and even a few showers trying to show up here in northern Wilson County moving towards Seguin. So far, San Antonio is dry. Uh, the heavier stuff has uh, been off to the uh, east near Howitzville. Seeing some lightning strikes with this. This is actually moving through Shiner as we speak, uh, getting some good rain there uh, in between Shiner and Howitzville. Uh, so that's kind of what we have going on right now. What can we expect in the future? We're putting in a 30% chance of rain today. Uh, so that's better than what we've seen last couple days. And this model, I think probably goes a little overboard here, but the idea is right. Some isolated showers and maybe a couple storms around five o'clock. Could it affect the evening commute? It could. 
Uh, so just be aware of that. And then as uh, we get into tonight, most of this dies down with the loss of daytime heating. So by 10 o'clock, a lot of this is, is out of here. But we're going to do this again tomorrow because we still have the same kind of setup in place. So by noontime, showers and storms gathering along the coast, and then they push inland towards San Antonio with some chances of isolated stuff tomorrow afternoon. Now after that, our rain chances go away. Uh, so the storm chances today about 30 uh, percent, four, five, six through maybe eight o'clock, and then uh, we see those rain chances fall off. Here's why we're getting some better rain chances. It has to do with some deeper moisture. So we have our uh, ridge of high pressure. It's well off to our east, uh, but the uh, circulation around that is driving in some deeper tropical moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And these darker greens you see here represent that thicker moisture, and oftentimes that can help create a little bit more activity when it comes to showers and storms. So that's what we're seeing as far as the setup goes today and tomorrow. 89 right now, mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 71. Uh, there is uh, quite a bit of humidity out there, so the heat index will be a problem today. 95 is what it feels like right now. And a lot of places will see that heat index get up near 100. We've also got the, the clouds uh, that are trying to kind of bubble up into some of these showers and storms. So I think it'll be partly to mostly cloudy. Right now we're at 89, but my hope is that the cloud cover, and if we do by any chance see some rain, uh, that that'll cool temperatures down some. Already pretty hot in Carrizo Springs, 91 there, 94 in Catua, and uh, 92 right now in Stinson, 91 at Randolph. Uh, there's a look at the forecast heat index today. I do think it'll feel like it's close to 100 here in town, some places over that number, 104 in Divine, 100. The feels like number in Hondo around 5 o'clock today. So, yes, a cooling shower would be. Great. Here's the KSAT 12 hour forecast to kind of wrap it all up here. 96 at 4 o'clock, 96 at 5 p.m., 30% chance of rain. We'll keep that going again through about 8 o'clock or so before uh, rain chances fall off and temperatures fall down into the 80s. Tonight we start off in the upper 70s tomorrow. 94 on Thursday, there's that 30% chance of rain. But after that, it dries up. 97 Friday, and then we're talking triple digits again as we get into Sunday and next week. All right. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here he is, Victor Wambayama. When can we see him play in a Spurs uniform in a competitive environment? Hopefully on Friday. We're going to explain why. Plus, Spurs dominating from start to finish when they took on the Hornets the first time in Summer League. We're actually going to hear from Larry Ramirez. He is living in the dream, living the California dream right now. We're going to hear from him, checking in with the team. Welcome back, Joe. Spurs go. Silver and Black getting the day off today in Northern California as the Summer League team, well, they took it right to Charlotte. The Hornets Monday right from the jump. They scored the first bucket, really kept it going. Julian Champagne leading the way for the Spurs. They got the lead to plus 30 at one point. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous. And then in just a few days working together, they're heading to Sacramento. So Larry Ramirez is there, tells us the coach clearly impressed with the team. I mean, what's there not to be impressed with? Plus, find out why Champagne might be playing so well to start the summer league. The Spurs opened up California Classic play with a convincing win, beating the Charlotte Hornets 98 to 77. It was a great way for the team to tip off summer league play, and Coach Nielsen approves. I, I thought it was an overall performance. I thought the guys uh, individually had some good uh, performances, but overall it was just backing each other defensively. I thought the, we guarded our man one-on-one, -on -one, but we had a good amount of help b behind, and I think that was encouraging, something we preached early on, uh, and, and just that kind of communication after practicing like two or three times is, is really good to see. And then offensively, same thing. I thought for the most part we kept the ball moving uh, and, and, and played the way we wanted to, and, and I thought it, it it went well for, for game one. Spurs forward Julian Champagne had a solid first game, torching the Hornets for 30 points with 15 of those points coming from three-point range. Yeah, I mean, Ju's been putting in work all offseason. Uh, we all expected it. We know what he's capable of, and I'm just super happy for him. The Spurs recently rewarded Julian with a four-year, $12 million contract. After going undrafted in the 2022 NBA draft, Julian now has a guaranteed roster spot. So is that helping him to play a little more freely? I mean, I guess, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a relief, you know, for a guy like me. Um, but obviously the same, same rules apply. You know, go out there, play the right way, play with your teammates, uh, and do the same thing, so yeah. And on the flip side, Julian wants to prove to the Spurs they made the right decision by offering him that big contract. That's it from Sacramento. Back to you in San Antonio. Thank you, Larry. All right. 
matchup for tonight. The Spurs and Lakers, the summer league teams at least, they tip off 7 p.m. We're going to have highlights and, of course, post-game reaction on the night beat. And then after the game against the Lakers, Spurs heading to Vegas for more summer league action. In case that 12 sports, they're going to Vegas. you got to enjoy that. And this is where we expect to see this man, the number one overall pick, Victor Wembanyama, suiting up. Silver and black playing his first minutes as a member of the Spurs. So the Spurs taking on the Hornets Friday, 8 p.m. from the Thomas and Mack Center. Then Spurs playing the Portland Trailblazers on Sunday at 7 p.m. And of course, check this out. Wemby approving of Joey Chestnut, the champ. This is what Wembyama shared on Instagram after Joey's powerful performance and 16th win of the mustard belt. The most dominant athlete of all time is what Wemby put on the gram. Some serious praise coming from a guy who some say could be one of the next LeBrons. So look at that. I'm loving the momentum of the Spurs, though. I'm loving the momentum of the uh, hot dog eating competition. <laughs> Where did you see? We're keeping it going. I know. We're going to drag this on for days. Of course. <laughs> all right. Now, new today at 5. Before pedaling down a bike trail, make sure your headgear is able to protect you if you fall. We're going to reveal which bike helmet for adults came out on top for protection and comfort today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. And oh, look at them go. Busting a move on SA Live. <laughs> they look fantastic. Hope we get to check in with them in about a half hour. I, Mike's got to bring those moves to GMSA. This is fantastic. <laughs> The man who fatally shot 23 people at an El Paso Walmart is expected to have a sentencing hearing in federal court today. In February, Patrick Crucius pleaded guilty to 90 charges related to a 2019 incident in which 23 victims were killed. Half of the charges are federal hate crimes. Authorities say the 24-year-old purposely carried out the shooting in order to kill immigrants who were in the area. The shooter originally pleaded non guilty, but later changed the plea after federal prosecutors said they wouldn't seek the death penalty. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Texas says he could face 90 consecutive life sentences. However, the gunman may still get the death penalty if he is convicted on state charges. Mexican authorities have made another arrest in the deadly kidnapping of four Americans in Matamoros, Mexico earlier this year. That makes a total of at least seven people who have now been arrested in the case. Latavia Washington McGee and Eric Williams survived the kidnapping, while Shahid Woodward and Zindel Brown were killed. The group had traveled from South Carolina to Matamoros for Washington McGee to undergo a medical procedure, but they were attacked by gunmen who fired into their van, then loaded them into the back of a truck and took them away. The victims were shuttled to multiple locations before they were found in a house around Matamoros. Now to the latest in the investigation, after a Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department deputy was caught on camera throwing a woman to the ground outside a store. ABC's Eva Pilgrim explains it all happened while he was responding to an incident. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department investigating this body cam video showing a deputy throwing a black woman to the ground. No, you can't touch Stop. me. You can't Stop. touch me. Get down on the ground. You? Get on the ground. It's already on you. Stop. I don't get... Stop. Motherfucker. Stop. Stop and you get punched in the you face. You punch me and you're going you're gonna to get sued. According to the Sheriff's Department, the deputies were responding to an in-progress robbery, encountering the man and woman in a grocery store parking lot in Lancaster. Squad 134 showing route with 129 to the entry 740 West Avenue, K4. Investigators also looking at video from another angle recorded by a bystander, where you can see the deputy hurl the woman to the pavement. The woman then calling out that she can't breathe as he places his knee near her neck. I can't breathe! Don't stop her! You killed me down the ground! The deputy then appears to pepper spray her face. You can hear the man pleading for mercy, saying the woman has cancer. She got cancer, man. All right, dude. From the ground, the woman crying out for a commander. Call the commander. As the June 24th incident is under investigation, the Sheriff's Department saying the Sheriff expects department personnel to treat all members of the public with dignity and respect, and that personnel who do not uphold our training standards will be held accountable. 
That was Eva Pilgrim reporting. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department reassigned the two deputies seen in the video. The department has launched a use of force investigation. Former Smallville actress Allison Mack was released from federal prison Monday. She had been sentenced to three years behind bars in 2021 for her role in the cult-like group Nexium. In 2018, Mack was arrested along with other leaders in the organization, including Keith Rainier, who was sentenced to 120 years in prison last year for racketeering charges. Nexium was based in Albany, New York, and claimed to hold self-help instructions. However, prosecutors say the members of the female-only group were forced into compromising situations, including having sex with Keith. No word on why Mac was released early. Back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. We got some blue skies, lots of cloud out there, Justin. Are the clouds keeping us from, you know, hitting mid-90s or at least 100? I think as the clouds increase a little bit this afternoon, it, it is going to help us. Yesterday we were in the mid-90s. I think we're probably there again today. We're seeing more clouds developing down to the south and east of town and some showers there too. Let's look at the big picture across Texas and you'll notice there is quite a bit of cloud cover stretching from the valley through San Antonio over to Houston and there are some showers showing up. So there's a good area of moisture that's coming in from the Gulf of Mexico that's helping to spark off some of this activity uh, this afternoon. And so far, not a lot here in town, but we're starting to see a little bit of shower development uh, there in Wilson County. And some of these are working north and we'll see if uh, they do move into Bear County. Meantime, the storm we had over towards uh, Howitzville pretty much falling apart. Now we've got another uh, new little cell that has developed there with a lightning strike. This is just to the east of Howitzville now and another little shower south of that. Uh, meantime, here around San Antonio, Again, some light returns, starting to see maybe a few very light showers develop. We'll see if these build into more uh, robust uh, cells here over the next hour or so. But so far, again, pretty quiet. Uh, we're going to put in about a 30% chance of rain this afternoon. Uh, not a great chance, but it is a better chance than we've seen as of late. 96, the forecast high, 93 at 7 o'clock, 91 at 8 p.m. and down to 89 at 9 o'clock with rain chances coming down. So just uh, have the umbrella on standby. And also keep in mind, heat indices will still be up around 100 later today, guys. Thank you, Justin. Ukraine and Russia accusing each other of planning to attack one of the world's largest nuclear power plants. Neither side providing evidence to support their accusations, but the nuclear power plant is located in southeastern Ukraine. It's occupied by Russian troops. Citing intelligence reports, Ukrainian President Zelensky said that Russian troops have placed objects resembling explosives on the roof of several power units. He said the objects could be used to quote-unquote simulate a false flag attack. In Russia, a Kremlin spokesperson said that, the, that Moscow was making every effort to counter quote-unquote great threat of sabotage by Ukraine. Staying overseas, Israel withdrawing its troops from the militant stronghold in the West Bank, but warned that its most intense military operation in the occupied territory in nearly two decades was not a one-off. This ends an intense two-day operation that ended with 13 dead, including an Israeli soldier. Residents of the area, Jenin, is a refugee camp. They found widespread damage after daybreak. The army claimed to have inflicted heavy damage on militant groups in Jenin, but remained unclear whether there would be any lasting effects after more than a year of heavy fighting across the West Bank. And a federal judge has issued a preliminary injunction that limits the Biden administration's ability to contact social media companies about protected speech. ABC's Faith Abube explains how the case could have effects on the First Amendment. The U.S. Department of Justice is reviewing a federal judge's injunction that could have major implications for First Amendment rights. The order from the judge, appointed by former President Trump, puts restrictions on when Biden administration officials can contact social media companies as a legal challenge moves through the court system. Republican attorneys general in Missouri and Louisiana filed a lawsuit claiming that the White House went too far in pressuring social media companies to remove misinformation about America's election security and the COVID-19 pandemic from their platforms. They're killing people. I mean, they really, they are, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. 
Judge Terry Doty calling the Biden administration's efforts a massive attack against free speech and targeted suppression of conservative ideas, adding in part, quote, American citizens have the right to engage in free debate about the significant issues affecting the country. The decision means top White House officials and several federal agencies, including the FBI and the Department of Justice, cannot communicate with social media companies for the purpose of urging, encouraging, pressuring or inducing in any manner the removal, deletion, suppression or reduction of content containing protected free speech. They can, however, contact them regarding any potential illegal activity and national security threats. And a White House official tells ABC News that the administration has promoted responsible actions to protect public health, safety and security when confronted by challenges like a deadly pandemic and foreign attacks on our elections. Again, the DOJ is now reviewing the administration's options. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News.